In the future, the way we see health will look a little different from this. Because you are completely unique. And your health journey should be unique too. What if someday you could have personalized health insights that honor your strength, your resilience, your family, your needs as they evolve every day. over the course of your whole life. In the future, your health journey should reflect everything that you are and help you make the right choices for your body. Because you contain multitudes. Well, hello. I'm Dr. Karen, Google's Chief Health Officer, and on behalf of everyone working in health at Google, I want to welcome you to the Checkup 2024, coming to you live from New York City. I am so excited for you all to hear about how we're shaping the future of health. The video you just saw gives a glimpse of that future that we want to enable, one where the complexity that makes all of us unique, our multitudes, is honored one that allows for a more customized and anticipatory experience. The future's within reach because we are at an inflection point in AI where we can see its potential to transform health on a planetary scale. As a doctor, it's thrilling to be part of this era at, at Google where we can bring our most powerful technology to improve health. Our goal is to make AI helpful so people can lead healthier lives. We do this by building health into the products and services that people already use every day and by creating technology that enables our partners to succeed and our communities to thrive. Our work is in service to users like you who rely on us to stay informed about your health. Whether you're searching for information about diabetes or watching a YouTube video on, on mental health, or understanding your sleep score on your watch or your phone. You want information that's high quality, easy to access, and personal to you. AI is helping us make that a reality. The pace and progress of AI's impact in health astounds me, especially when I see it in action. Just last year at the checkup, we launched our medically tuned large language model, MedLM. And fast forward to today, it's already being explored in the field. You'll hear several examples, but I want to highlight three ways our partners around the world are using MedLM and our other AI to innovate. In the US, Ginkgo Bioworks is advancing drug discovery and biosecurity. In the UK, Human Therapeutics is supporting clinicians with better insights. And in India, Apollo Hospitals is using AI to ease access to their 24-7 telehealth services. For the first time in my career, I can see clearly a near-term future where everyone everywhere lives a healthier life, not just some people in some places. I'm not alone in this optimism about the promising potential of AI to unlock better health. Research shows that people expect medical breakthroughs to be a top application of AI. We're in the early stages of understanding the opportunities these new AI technologies present. It seems clear that in the future, AI won't replace doctors, but doctors who use AI will replace those who don't. We must remember that AI is just a tool, and at the end of the day, health is human. 
Practicing medicine, I learned that health moves at the speed of trust. I know there are challenges ahead for all of us in getting this technology right, which will require intention and collaboration. Here at Google, we're working to earn this trust every day by tackling important health problems in a way that's safe, private, secure, and equitable. We're also joining up with groups like the Coalition for Health AI to develop technologies to, act, to assess this technology when it's put into practice. We'll continue to partner with the health ecosystem and the people it's serving to uphold one of medicine's oldest commitments. First, do no harm. Anything else is unacceptable. So let me turn it over to our Google Health team to share more about how we're bringing the potential of AI to health. Here's Google's VP of Engineering and Research, Yossi Matias, to get us started. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Karen. Hello, everyone. I'm Yossi. I'm on a Google Research Leadership and uh, a global lead of AI for Health, Climate, and Education. Our team harnesses the power of AI to address societal challenges, working closely with people, communities, and partners globally to impact the lives of billions. I'm so excited about the opportunities of AI to transform healthcare in many aspects. Healthcare presents some of society's most complex obstacles, and yet we've seen that AI, when explored boldly and responsibly, can open up a world of opportunities to drive positive change in medicine. At Google, my teams have worked on building state-of-the-art research models to show the world what is possible with AI in healthcare. We've developed AI systems that detect breast cancer with the accuracy of a radiologist, sequenced genomes faster than ever before, and helped screen hundreds of thousands of people for diabetic retinopathy. More recently, we focused on going from research to reality, more effectively than ever before. We're going beyond showing what is possible with AI, driving real-world change that helps people live healthier lives. Today, you'll not only hear about our next generation of research in AI, but also how we're enabling meaningful healthcare solutions through Google Cloud, Google Search, Android, and more. Last year, we were just beginning to understand what's possible with generative AI in healthcare with models like MedPalm, and we knew we couldn't transform healthcare alone. By adapting these models to real-world use cases and collaborating with trusted partners like Augmedics, HCA Healthcare, and Meditech, we brought to life our belief that AI can fundamentally reshape healthcare workflows. We recently introduced MedLM, our family of foundation models, fine-tuned for the healthcare industry, now used by dozens of organizations globally. MedLM is driving innovation like for partners with use cases like patient interaction, summarization, and medical insight generation. But language is just one dimension. Medicine is inherently multimodal. To realize AI's potential, we must build systems that seamlessly analyze a variety of data types. We're now expanding our MetaLM family of models to include multimodality, starting with MetaLM for chest X-ray, which is now available in an experimental preview on Google Cloud to allow our customers to build solutions. We started with chest x-rays because they are critical in detecting lung and heart conditions with two billion chest x-rays performed annually. Radiologists are often left overburdened by the volume of imaging data they need to process. MedLM for chest x-ray will enable things like findings, classification, semantic search, and more. We hope this will provide solutions that can improve the efficiency of radiologist workflows empowering them to deliver high quality and consistent care. This process is thrilling, but as Karen mentioned, health moves at the speed of trust. At Google, this means tirelessly addressing issues of safety and equity within our AI models. Medical AI evolved, evolves rapidly, so it's critical we use a participatory approach and share our learnings as we identify gaps. This will help us build trust 
as we move forward improving health outcomes and quality care for everyone, everywhere. That's why we're announcing our recent research to evaluate potential equity-related gaps within medical large language models. In this research, which you can think of as a toolbox for healthcare innovators, we introduce three important components. First, we present a series of adversarial testing datasets to evaluate the relationship between medical large language models and health equity. Second, our toolbox includes guidance for human rater assessment. Our goal is to share how we rigorously evaluate large language models. Third, we show how we use this toolbox to evaluate equity-related harms in our own large language models. This is our first step towards understanding potential health equity gaps related to LLMs and generative AI more broadly. We invite the health and research community to learn from and build upon these tools as we all work to foster more transparent and equitable medical AI. The AI transformation and generative AI in particular presents opportunities that we could only dream about not that long ago. Though we're still in the early stages of this journey, I'm really excited about the potential impact we can make. Today, you'll hear more about how the Gemini era is driving forward innovations in health and medicine at Google. This includes exploring how fine-tuning Gemini models for medicine can enable next-generation capabilities like advanced reasoning, multimodality, and more personalized insights. You will also hear how we're working with partners to deliver real-world impact with AI. Now, I'd like to pass it on to my colleague, Ashima Gupta, Global Director of Healthcare for Google Cloud, and Dr. Schlosser from HCA Healthcare. Well, hello everyone, I'm Ashma. I'm thrilled to be here today with my dear friend, Dr. Michael Schlosser, the Senior Vice President of Care Transformation and Innovation at HCA Healthcare. Welcome. Ashma, thanks for having me. Today we want to share how Google Cloud and HCA Healthcare are partnering to harness the power of generative AI to elevate clinical care and ease the burden on healthcare teams. So let's start with the goals of the collaboration. At Google, we see the potential for AI to help address major issues in healthcare. Things like staff shortages, documentation burnout, and the mountain of administrative tasks that pull clinicians away from patient care. Our goal is to develop AI technology that supports clinicians by augmenting their abilities. At HCA Healthcare, we're committing to finding innovative ways to improve care delivery. This collaboration is about aligning Google's cutting edge AI with HCA Healthcare's on the ground knowledge uh, and clinical knowledge and expertise. This will help us create impactful, meaningful solutions ta tailored to the real needs of patients and care teams. Working closely with Dr. Schlosser and his team has been incredible. This collaboration has ensured we are building the technology solutions that are focused on the right priorities and challenges for our partners. We ground our AI technology in real-world use cases. And with MedLM on cloud, the generated responses are secure, they are private, they're permissions aware, and all this equals to enterprise-grade Gen AI. We have always taken a human-centered approach to AI in health. For HA Healthcare, these priorities focus on improving operational workflows for care teams and driving a more seamless patient engagement. We've been exploring the capabilities of MedLM to solve these real problems. Using MedLM, we have automated things like documentation, uh, summarizing insights from medical records. Most important to this process, we're putting our clinicians at the heart of this innovation, giving them a voice to tell what they need, including them early in the testing process. When we first showed MedLM to members of our care team, we heard a resounding feedback that this could be extremely valuable in supporting part of the care process that has been an issue since the beginning of healthcare, the nurse-to-nurse -nurse handoff, sometimes commonly known as the bedside shift report. This handoff occurs when one nurse reaches the end of their shift and they have to hand off and transfer critical information about the patient to the next nurse coming on. 
This step is vital to patient safety and is done with printed, digitally hard-coded reports, manual processes. Apart from noting the standard data like vitals and allergies, it also relies on the nurse's recollection of events and conversations and data points that they consider relevant to be transitioned, like how the patient slept or how often they asked for medications. So we asked ourselves, how can MedLM optimize the nurse handoff, consolidating volumes of patient records into one succinct, logical, and maybe even intelligent and interactive handoff process? And right now, we're working with Google and MedLM to build a tool that does exactly that. MedLM's capabilities can be used to analyze patients' health history, clinician notes, and more to create a comprehensive, easy to use summary for the handoff. A nurse then reviews the note, confirms its accuracy, modifies as needed, and hands it over to their counterpart. This helps nurses quickly get to the information they need, giving them more time to dedicate to patient care. And it's how we are taking AI from research to reality. And so this is all very exciting and it's moving very fast, but we believe in the need to go slow to go fast. And so let me explain that. With the right risk-based framework, which allows selection of the right use cases, the right data sets, and the right approaches, we'll be able to quickly learn how to use and deploy AI in medicine. We have strict protocols around AI development that prioritize safety, accuracy, and always keep clinicians in control, a human in the loop. As Ashma said, these technologies are meant to enhance care teams, never replace them. Our collaboration highlights the power of partnership in pushing the boundaries of healthcare innovation in a safe, equitable, and ethical manner. But we know that we are early in our journey, and we want to ensure that advancement of these new technologies happen with healthcare and not to healthcare. Hi everyone, I'm Greg, and I lead the Health AI research team at Google. I've been working on expanding the capabilities of AI at Google for a long time, but for the last few years, I've been focused on applying AI to healthcare, because I believe that health and medicine offer some of the greatest opportunities for this technology to deliver real positive change in the world. You've already heard about how our breakthroughs in generative AI like MetaLM are being improved and explored in real world care settings, but now I'm excited to share some of our forward looking research aimed at bringing us to the next frontier of healthcare innovation. We truly are in a new era of AI innovation. At Google, the Gemini family of models is unlocking new capabilities to power this era. We've fine-tuned Gemini models for, medical, for the medical domain and have been evaluating their performance across a wide range of tasks. I'd like to talk specifically about how we've seen gains in advanced reasoning, in long context windows, and in multimodality. Let's start with advanced reasoning. About a year and a half ago, we built the first AI system that was able to achieve a passing score on a medical licensing exam benchmark called MedQA. Our newest model, fine-tuned for the medical domain, achieves state-of-the-art performance on, medical, on the medical QA benchmark, standing at over 91%. Now, medical exam questions may be where we started this journey, but they're hardly an end in and of themselves. You see, in medicine, context matters. And that's why we've expanded our evaluations to investigate long context window tasks, asking models to sift through large quantities of information like text, images, audio, or video to extract relevant information. This is particularly important in the healthcare industry, which generates over 30% of the world's new data annually. When doctors see new patients, particularly in complicated cases, they have questions about the patient's medical history. Much of this information is held in dense electronic medical records. But now we've observed that if we provide synthetic medical record, a synthetic medical record as part of the context, our models are able to correctly and directly answer a physician's questions about the patient's history. Video 
is another important means of knowledge sharing, but unlocking meaningful insights from medical videos has been challenging. We've tested our new model's ability to answer questions based on content from educational medical videos posted on YouTube. On a data set of examples of this kind of task called MedVidQA, our model sets a new bar for state-of-the-art performance. Video is both an example of a long context window capability and also a multimodal capability, which is what I want to talk about next. Multimodality is the ability to absorb and reason across multiple different data types, like text, images, and audio. Gemini models were built from the ground up to be multimodal. And after all, medicine is also inherently multimodal. To make the best care decisions, Healthcare professionals regularly interpret signals across a plethora of sources, including medical images, clinical notes, electronic health records, and lab tests. To be genuinely helpful, AI should be able to follow a care team's reasoning as it crosses the boundary between these different information types. For example, a radiologist interpreting a chest x-ray will need to create a report about the image describe the findings, and answer questions from the referring physician. The physician, in turn, will need to take actions based on that report. It would be a big help if AI could assist the radiologist by spotting errors or omissions, or even helping to draft the report itself. As a proof of principle, we built a model that can generate radiology reports based on a set of open access, de-identified chest x-rays. We found that the majority of the reports generated by our model were considered to be comparable in quality to radiologist reports. But chest x-rays are a two-dimensional kind of imaging, flat pictures. But more complicated cases often required 3D imaging, like CT scans or MRIs, that can reveal findings that are invisible in a 2D image. We tested how our new model would perform on the significantly more complex task report generation for 3D brain CTs, with these 3D images, we found that a significant portion of the reports that our model generated were judged by independent clinicians to be on a par or better than manually created reports. While these results are very encouraging, they are not an endorsement that these AI systems are ready to be trusted to generate radiology reports independently. Instead, they emphasize that it's time to evaluate AI's ability to assist radiologists in real-world report generation workflows. We plan to release a paper on our results in the coming months. But the real hallmark of the kind of multimodal intelligence that we need in medicine is flexibility. Beyond tasks like report generation or even genomic sequencing, our model showed state-of-the-art performance on medical visual question answering benchmarks, and on complex diagnostic challenges. This demonstrates the model's flexibility across a wide range of tasks and modalities. But let's all remember one of the most important elements of medicine, the conversation between patients and their care teams, where skilled and intentional communication drives diagnosis, management, and trust. We've introduced Articulate Medical Intelligence Explorer earlier this year, or AMI for short. AMI is a research system that is based on an LLM. We've trained it to explore how AI can support clinical conversations by asking contextually relevant questions in search of a diagnosis. Empathy is a core part of medicine. So we've designed this model to communicate with respect, explaining things clearly, and supporting the individual in their decision-making process. This better reflects real-world clinical consultations, where caregivers always ask for the information that will give them more insight in the patient's care in the most humane way possible. We've performed two randomized studies to understand how this LLM would perform. In our first study, 
we tested the LLM's ability to generate a differ differential diagnosis alone or as an aid to a clinician. In this research, we evaluated our LLM using over 300 New England Journal of Medicine case challenges. These challenges present complex scenarios that a doctor might face in a clinical setting, including di diagnostic dilemmas, unusual presentations of disease, or treatment decisions with difficult trade-offs. These challenge cases are a way for doctors and medical students and other healthcare professionals to sharpen their skills. In our study, we found that the LLMs have the potential to improve clinician performance when generating a differ differential diagnosis, even surpassing individual cl clinicians when it's operating alone. In our second study, we evaluated the LLM's conversational capabilities by having it interact with patient actors in a mock clin clinical examination. We found that the system was capable of dialogue and diagnostic reasoning and conversing with patient actors in a helpful and empathetic way. It's worth noting that these studies were all conducted in a simulated environment. And they aren't necessarily representative of everyday clinical practice. And while we think these early re results with AMI are very promising, we need to understand whether a system like AMI can be of real use in a real clinical setting. And if it is useful, how should it interact with care teams to be as assistive as possible? Our next step will be to test this with a healthcare organization to understand how an LLM like AMI can be helpful in supporting clinical diagnostic conversations. We hope to learn how useful a model like this is, can, both for clinicians and for patients. And of course, with constant oversight of medical professionals. As a reminder, this research is about exploring the art of the possible in healthcare. And if it is possible, whether and how to build it safely, equitably, and in an assistive way. Next, I'd like to invite our Chief Health Equity Officer, Dr. Ivor Horn, to the stage. Hello, everyone. I'm Ivor. You've heard a lot today about the promise of AI to transform health and to improve access and outcomes. But there's a flip side. AI has the potential to exacerbate health disparities and further imbalances in equity. There's currently no established standard to ensure that data used to develop AI reflects the diversity of people and experiences around the world. And in healthcare, there's historically been a lack of representation of historically marginalized populations in areas like clinical trial research. This excludes groups of historically marginalized people from an important step in finding new ways to prevent, detect, or treat disease. Without diverse representative data, AI models could do more harm than good. At Google, our goal is to build for everyone everywhere and to improve access to and equity of care. This means we also need to build with everyone. An example of how we're building with an inclusive mindset is in dermatology. We've been exploring whether AI can help people better understand their dermatology issues or concerns. Along the way, we realize that many existing dermatology data sets include primarily skin cancers and other severe conditions, yet lack common concerns like allergic reactions. Plus, images are often captured in a clinical setting and may not reflect a diversity of images including different parts of the body, different skin tones, and more. I saw this firsthand when I went through medical school. In fact, it's estimated that less than 20% of dermatology textbook images contain dark skin tones, a statistic that has not changed in about 15 years. 
To correct the, er the failures of the past, we need to ensure these biases are not repeated in, in the way that we build AI models. So we set out to develop a data set inclusive of skin tones from a diverse group of people, representing different levels of condition severity, skin tones, ages, genders, and more. Today, with Stanford Medicine, we're releasing the Skin Condition Image Network, or SKIN dataset, available to everyone. Thousands of people contributed photos to help build an open access data set with over 10,000 images of skin, nail, and hair concerns. Dermatologists then labeled these de-identified images with a possible diagnosis. Then they rated them based on two skin tone scales to make sure the data set includes an expansive collection of conditions and skin types. It was amazing to see so many people contribute to the data set to help advance dermatology-related research. Ultimately, we hope this data set can be used to advance science and develop products around dermatology. Perhaps by helping scientists build innovative diagnostic tools, supporting dermatology-related research, or serving as a tool for educators to expose students to a wider pool of skin conditions and issues. I really wish I had that when I was in medical school. Beyond ensuring diversity of data, it's critical to understand whether AI models perform equitably. Meaning, do these models exacerbate existing disparities or do they help give everyone a fair opportunity to be as healthy as possible? For almost any health condition, some groups of people have worse outcomes than others, oftentimes for reasons not even related to the disease itself. Here's an illustration of how we put this framework to use. Let's stick with dermatology. As, a, as an example, we are using HEAL which we've determined is called Health Equity um, Assessment of Machine Learning, and we dubbed it HEAL for short. Using HEAL, we evaluated an AI model designed to predict dermatology conditions based on photos of skin concerns. So we asked ourselves, does this framework help ensure the model doesn't exacerbate health disparities? What about those who typically experience worse outcomes? And how about groups based on race, age, and sex? Here's what we found. The model performed equitably across race, ethnicity, and skin subgroups. But we discovered that it had some room for improvement when it came to age. Older adults, 70 and over, are at risk of worse health outcomes from skin conditions. Our model recognized that with cancers, but it did not when it came to more common concerns like allergic reactions. This is a great example of the HEAL framework doing what it was meant to do, highlighting where we need to improve our model. There's already been a lot of work to measure bias and fairness in AI, and we believe the HEAL framework adds another layer of evaluation. Our work at the intersection of AI and health equity is an ongoing journey. We're committed to building solutions that make healthcare more equitable, this works and, but this work takes time and intention. And the stakes are too high not to get it right. Next, please welcome Google's engineering director, Shravya Shetty. Hi everyone, I'm Shravya, and I lead engineering teams exploring the cutting edge of AI in health. We want to help improve the health of billions of people across the globe, especially those in under-resourced environments, which is where we believe that AI can have a profound impact. 
Now, this work is very personal to me. I grew up in India, where timely access to care for people who live in hard to reach communities or villages that may have no hospitals can be seen as a luxury. And throughout my work here at Google, I've seen how technologies like AI can help bridge that gap and help save lives. Now this is what motivates me and my team. For years now, we've been working on AI to help increase the accuracy and the access to screenings for life-threatening diseases, including tuberculosis, lung cancer, and breast cancer. And we have a deep history of working with our partners to understand how our technology might expand access to health services or improve the quality of care. For instance, can AI help improve how tuberculosis is diagnosed today and get people to the treatment that they need more quickly? So that's the question that we're trying to answer with our partner in India, Apollo Radiology International. And today, we're excited to share that Apollo will build upon our TB, lung, and breast cancer models to help diagnose more people sooner. So let's now zoom out and get a better understanding of the impact of these three diseases on people's health in the region. India has the highest burden of TB worldwide, with over two million cases reported each year. And the tragedy here is that there are many more cases that go undetected in the community because of a lack of access or timely intervention. And lung cancer is still one of the biggest causes of cancer mortality in India. Further, India has more than three times the death rate from breast cancer compared to the US. And for both of these diseases, screening rates across the country are very low. And there's a countrywide shortage of radiologists to interpret these scans. Now, I know these figures are staggering, but many of these deaths can be prevented. And we believe that AI has an important role here in helping more people receive diagnosis sooner and get life-saving treatment. Apollo is working towards bringing these models to markets across India. This means that with the required regulatory approvals, they can incorporate our algorithms into screening programs nationally. Additionally, over the next 10 years, Apollo will provide AI-powered screenings for TB, lung, and breast cancer in under-resourced communities at no cost. This will extend access and care to hundreds of thousands of people. Let's now take a deeper look at our work with Apollo and what AI-powered screens could mean for patients. हमारो नाम से धारसी भाई नान जी जी ठाकुर खेत नो काम करे सा ने पशुपालक साथे काम करे जी इतने हमने खासी आवती थी अन्य अंदर थी सवासपन यम सड़ते वो तातु तो ने रे शक्ति कम पड़ती थी वजन घटी जातो तो जन जन ताव रहते हो मर हमारा तकलीफ भी उठाती हमारो पशुपालक नो अन्य हमारा चोकरा नो अन्य हमारा पत्नी नो आप पर से हमें रिपोर्ट घटाई होना नजीक में धानेरा जाए, धानेरा वाला डॉक्टर का रिपोर्ट बताए इतने धानेरा वाला सही दिखी तो कि तुम्हारा आवी रिटेज़ है आमा के। My name is Dr. Srinivas Raju Kalidindi. My father was a doctor. He was the only physician for the entire village, but all he had was a stethoscope and a microscope. There was no technology of any kind, so he saved a lot of lives. So that is the reason in my decision to become a doctor and also become a radiologist. India is a country that has about a quarter of the world's TB burden. Approximately 1.3 million people died of TB in 2022. Under 400,000 were deaths in India. Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, I'm going to be talking today about TB. TB is an airborne disease. It enters the lungs and it can cause infection within the lungs. It can cause cavities, it can cause abscesses, it can cause accumulation of fluid around the lungs, and it can spread to other organs, and in some cases can be fatal. If TB is treated promptly with medication, the lungs can become healthy again and the patient will be cured. It is not acceptable for a curable disease to kill so many people in the modern age. 
I've been at Google now for a long time, over 16 years. And for the last six years, I've been working pretty much exclusively at this intersection of health and AI. We've been partnering with Apollo Hospital and Dr. Raju and his team for several years now. We have an effort in the use of AI to detect tuberculosis from chest x-rays as a means of triaging. We need solutions that could be scalable and are cost effective so that you could then detect tuberculosis early enough and thus reduce the spread in communities. And for the case of AI for chest x-ray solutions, it felt like a great fit. One really good example of how AI can be used is having a van going into the villages with an X-ray machine on board. The patients can come, have a screening done, and then also have their X-ray done. And the X-ray will then be transmitted to a central location where AI can give an immediate interpretation about the likelihood of TB. And this interpretation will later be confirmed by a radiologist to act as an aid to the radiologist so that they can make the diagnosis more quickly and more effectively. या गांव में जा मरता हुआ दी सगड़े इतने हमारे अगर जवान जरूर न थी चलने मरने दान था है My father had a lot of patients who had TB. If he had access to something like this, I'm sure he would have been able to treat a lot more patients with TB and probably save a lot of lives. My father would have been extremely excited. Beyond using AI to support early diagnosis, our research teams have also been using AI to improve the accuracy and reduce the cost of genome sequencing. Genetic heritability is responsible for 30% of a person's health outcomes, but in practice, it's hardly used to guide disease prevention and care. Sequencing genomes enables us to identify variants in a person's DNA that indicate genetic disorders, such as an elevated risk for breast cancer, and we have a long history of developing open source software for applications to improve the accuracy and the speed of genetic sequencing. One such example is our deep variant method, which accurately finds genetic variants in sequencing data. It was even used to identify disease-causing variants for newborns in record time. Genetic conditions affect nearly 6% of births, but clinical sequencing tests to identify these conditions can take days or weeks to complete. So we partnered with Stanford to study the use of deep variant to help identify suspected disease-causing variants in critical NICU cases. In the fastest cases, a likely disease-causing variant was identified in as little as eight hours after sequencing began. Now think of the potential this has in getting babies to the treatment that they need more quickly. And more recently, Deep Consensus and Deep Variant, our open source sequence analysis tools, have been important contributions to an effort called the Human Pan Genome Project. This has created a new human reference genome that contains the sequences of multiple individuals of diverse ancestries. The first draft of the human genome was completed back in 2003. And while it was a huge scientific breakthrough, it was created almost entirely based on one man who responded to a newspaper ad. And needless to say, that does not capture much diversity. The Human Pan Genome Project is the largest state step taken to date in developing a reference genome that truly represents everyone. It features 47 genome sequences pulled from people all over the world. And we recently released an open source genomics pipeline for the scientific community to use the pan genome in their analysis. Now this is a big deal because the point of a reference genome is to serve as a standard of sorts. People from underrepresented backgrounds have a higher rate of undiagnosed or misdiagnosed diseases. So scientific discovery and drug de development should be based on a reference genome that is truly representative of everyone everywhere. There is so much potential here for AI and genomics research to unlock new learnings about genetics and diseases. And our contributions to these scientific efforts 
can help development of new treatments and a much more complete understanding of biology. And now, here is Kate O'Riordan, our VP of Product for Search Verticals. Hello everyone, I'm Kate. It's no secret that people come to Google search with questions about their health hundreds of millions of times a day. And for more than two decades, we've continuously redefined what a search engine can do, always guided by our mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. When it comes to questions about your health in particular, access to high quality information can have a profound impact. That's why we've been working to make this information more accessible to more people in more places around the world. Let's take a look. Some health questions are really difficult to describe in words alone. For example, if you see a discoloration or other abnormality on your skin, trying to describe the color or the shape or the texture is not always easy. So starting last year, we made it possible to use Google Lens to search what you see on your skin. And it couldn't be easier. Take a picture of your skin with Lens in the Google app, and you'll find visually similar matches from the web to inform your search. This AI-powered feature, available in more than 150 countries, also works if you're not sure how to describe something else on your body, like a bump on your lip. We're also continuing the work we've prioritized for many years to surface trustworthy health information globally. That's why we've partnered with the WHO to add authoritative information in knowledge panels in more countries and in more languages. With this expansion, knowledge panels on search can now provide people with helpful information on dozens of conditions, from the common cold to colon cancer, We've added knowledge panels across more than 80 countries, such as Botswana, Pakistan, and the Philippines. Another part of making health information accessible to everyone is presenting it in formats they can easily understand. So with this in mind, we've been making the experience more visual on mobile devices. We've added images and diagrams from high quality sources on the web that make it easier to understand symptoms, like neck pain, for example. And we're also working to make these more visual results available on mobile for health conditions as well, such as migraines, kidney stones, and pneumonia, in whichever format you understand information best, using text, images, or videos, we want, you to, help, want to help you find those answers to your health questions. And over the next few months, we'll be rolling out this update globally. We're also continuing to work to ensure that people get critical help in those moments of crisis, wherever they are. We've extend, extended the suicide, domestic violence, and sexual assault hotlines shown in search to dozens of countries and languages. This year alone, we'll increase coverage across these features by 20 additional countries, including Puerto Rico and Thailand. This will help people connect with local resources when they need it most. And as searches for mental health crisis continue to climb, year after year, we've made it easier to find clinically validated self-assessments for depression and anxiety in more countries. Now in Japan, Mexico, and India, you'll see a link to self-assessments in the knowledge panel for those conditions. These are just the latest features that we're adding to make health quality, high quality health information more accessible for the billions of global searches we see on Google every day. And there's so much more to come. I'd now like to hand it over to Dr. Garth Graham from YouTube Health. Thanks, Kate. Um, first of all, I just want to shout out a lot of you all here who are leaning into the future of health and public health, including a lot of our partners from YouTube. Um, Joe from the American Heart Association. Joe, Joe, I see you. Let me try my glasses. I see you out there. Um, uh, folks from Mass General Brigham who are here with us as well, um, and Marjorie from PsychHub, who PsychHub is just doing some amazing things, not just on YouTube in terms of on-platform, but off-platform as well. 
And these are the kinds of partners that represent the ecosystem of not just where healthcare is now, but meeting people where healthcare needs to be in terms of the future and the consumer health journey. So let me start off by um, introducing myself. Um, I'm Garth, Garth Graham, and I lead what we're doing with health and YouTube. And as Marjorie said, we're deeply committed to this issue of information quality and reaching patients, communities, people, where they are, especially when they have important life questions, they're on their journey, and that journey we want to be on with them in terms of YouTube. So in a world as interconnected as ours, language really should not be a hurdle when it comes to vital healthcare knowledge. Yet for many of our content creators, the effort of producing videos in multiple languages that can be both overwhelming and costly. And this means that the potential of life-changing information, health information that's important to people, might not reach those who need it the most, especially those who we care about the most. And this is where features like Allowed comes in. YouTube's no-cost AI-powered dubbing tool streamlines the video translation and dubbing process, empowering creators to expand their reach and reaching people where they are. In September, we announced a pilot in collaboration with a number of organizations to learn how to responsibly scale aloud with our health creators so that they can more efficiently reach global audiences with critical health information at no cost. So far, the tool has allowed institutions such as our partners at Mass General Brigham to dub a number of first aid videos from English into Spanish, providing potentially life-saving information. Uh, let's see it in action. Begin two compressions per second, or 100 to 120 per minute, and press down at least two inches in depth with the heel of your hand. Comience con dos compresiones por segundo o de 100 a 120 por minuto y presione hacia abajo al menos dos pulgadas de profundidad con la palma de la mano. I had to say as a cardiologist, I just love that video. But let's really think about what's happening there. Imagine the impact of breaking down language barriers to educate people before an emergency. Imagine a Spanish-speaking mother learning how to perform CPR on her child, a construction worker studying how to control bleeding in case of an accident, even thinking through the cases of an elderly couple being able to quickly identify signs of a stroke. And these are just a couple of examples of how important it is to really break down this issue of language access and give people quality information when they need it the most. And now, Mass General Brigham is using Allowed to open more doors to essential care, not just for urgent needs, but for life-changing management of chronic conditions like COPD and cancer. Allowed can help more patients navigate our ever-increasingly complex health journeys and make better informed decisions, whether understanding the diagnosis for them or their families, or evaluating treatment options and really taking control and grasp of their own medical care. Scaling accessibility also includes the lowering barriers for health professionals, for those in training, for those in practice, and allowing them to share, discuss, and advance medical knowledge as a global community. As you heard from Dr. Ivor Horn, we're really committed to this issue of health equity and really understanding how we train the next generation of clinicians. Starting today, an animation-style course on how to promote racial justice in medical education is available in Spanish for free on the Stanford Medicine Continuing Medical Education channel, thanks to Allowed. And shout out to the people from Stanford in terms of their leadership in this as well. Now, this vital medical education resource is multilingual and accessible to health professionals around the world to practically recognize and address implicit bias, which we know is real, and understanding how to address this bias in clinical practice and better advocate for their patients from underrepresented and underserved communities. But folks, this is really just the beginning. We're continuing the pilot and expanding access to even more health content creators to help unlock authoritative information that might otherwise be contained to just a single language. The future of communication needs to be inclusive and YouTube's Allowed has the potential to facilitate this journey by making the dubbing process easier and faster and giving people access to information when they need it the most. By breaking down language barriers, we can build an informed, healthier, and connected world. And now, here's Google Director of Product, Florence Tung. Florence.
Thanks, Dr. Darth. Isn't that inspiring? Growing up in Indonesia, I really love how AI and Allowed is making medical knowledge more universally accessible to anyone who speaks many different languages. Hi, everyone. My name is Florence, and I'm a director of product management at Fitbit. At Fitbit, our mission is to help everyone in the world become healthier. Today, Pixel Watch and Fitbit trackers do a great job of synthesizing your personal health and fitness data for you to see, track, and explore in the Fitbit app. From advanced sleep metrics to optimizing your fitness routine using your daily readiness score, to assessing your heart rhythm for potential sign of atrial fibrillation, Fitbit can provide valuable data and insight into your holistic health and wellness. Looking ahead, we're building personal AI into products across our portfolio to bring tailored, personalized insights based on your unique needs and preferences. That's why we're creating new AI experiences in Fitbit Labs. It's a concept that we introduced last year. Fitbit Lab would be a space in the mobile app where premium users can get early access to experimental AI features so that they can test out and give feedback. This offers an opportunity for our users to partner with us as we build and iterate on these experiences. We know that our users want tools to help them connect the dots within their health data so that they can better understand their personal health metrics and also easily see how they're trending and progressing. Building on Google's AI expertise, Fitbit Lab can help you derive meaningful and personalized insight by bringing together your multimodal time series health and wellness data. It can even generate charts for the data points that you want to visualize. You'll be able to then interact with these insights in a freeform chat space, allowing you to dig deeper into your health data the way that you want them and get a fuller understanding on how different aspects of your health may correlate or impact one another. For example, you could discover that your sleep score is best on the days that you are more active. On a recent vacation with my family, I was put in charge of all the children one day, and I hit my record number of steps and then my best sleep score that night. With these type of tools and features, I'll be able to then dig deeper into these type of connection. Am I just more active when I'm around children? Um, later this year, Fitbit Lab features will be available for testing for a limited number of Android users who are enrolled in the Fitbit Labs program in the mobile app. Looking ahead, we want to deliver even more personalized health experiences with AI. So we're partnering with Google Research, health and wellness expert, doctors, and personalized and certified coaches to create personal health large language model that can reason about your health and fitness data and provide tailored recommendation similar to how a personal coach would. This personal health LLM will be a fine-tuned version of our Gemini model. This model, fine-tuned using high-quality research case studies based on the de-identified diverse health signals from Fitbit, will help users receive more tailored insights based on patterns in sleep schedule, exercise intensity, changes in heart rate variability, resting heart rate, and many, many more. For example, we're testing these features using sleep medicine certification practice exam, and we're already seeing that our model performs well. Of course, we'll continue to iterate and learn as we build this new personal health LLM, and we will be sharing more research soon. This fine tuning allows it to deliver personal coaching capabilities that can mimic real world coaching scenarios, like offering actionable guidance that is contextualized and tailored to your personal fitness and health goal. Imagine a future where you have access to an on-demand personal coach that can provide you with daily guidance. For example, it can analyze variation in your sleep patterns and sleep quality and make recommendations on how you might change the intensity or the time of your workout based on these insights. We're also keeping responsible AI practices at the center of this new model by thoughtfully designing it and training it 
on a diverse and curated sets of health and wellness data that's covering a wide range of domains. This new personal health LLM will power future AI features across our portfolio to bring personalized health experiences to our users. While it's not meant to diagnose, treat, mitigate, cure or prevent any disease, injury, or condition. We hope that this more personalized AI coaching model can help you reach your fitness, health, and well-being goals in ways that were not possible before. A few recent launches show how we are invested in health and wellness across our portfolio and with new partnerships. Take Pixel 8 Pro Thermometer app. It's the first US FDA granted body temperature app for smartphones. It's a safe and easy way to quickly check yours or your child's temperature without needing an additional device. Health Connect. This is a way for Android users to see a more complete pictures of their health in the recently redesigned Fitbit app. You can now import your favorite health and wellness data from your favorite app like All Trails or My Fitness app. And a new study in partnership with Quest Diagnostic, one of the leading clinical diagnostic providers to, get, to look at how wearable device could help people better understand and manage their metabolic health. Across our portfolio, we're continuously innovating on new features with the help of personal AI so that our users can better understand their health and wellness data and ultimately lead healthier lives. Now let's bring Dr. Karen back to close the show. I can't wait for my personal coach, so bring it on, Flo. Um, well, listen, thank you, Florence, and thank you to all of our presenters uh, and our guests. Uh, most importantly, to all of you who did join us live here in New York, um, but also those who are joining us uh, via the live stream. We hope that you are as excited as I am about the potential of AI to transform human health and how this new generation of technologies is bringing us closer to a future where all of us, you, me, our friends, our families, can live healthier lives. Thank you all for joining us for the checkup with Google Health, and that is a wrap. <laughs>